Well, hello everybody, and welcome to this episode of G-Bears Off-Grid Ways. Homestead in the desert. Yeah, got some winds today again. And uh, you can see I've got 13.8 volts in the battery, and you say, well, what the heck? Well, it's floating. This is on float. But uh, the reason that it's not any higher than that is because in the cabin, to save propane... I'm running a 1500 watt, that's 1500 watts, um, oil filled radiator, electric radiator, on the system right now. And of course, everything else, my, um, all my clocks, my uh, oven, my, my microwaves, uh, everything that's inside a refrigerator that runs on electricity is still running just as normal. And I'm still at 13.8 volts. And I'm bringing in uh, 300 uh, so watts on solar. But I'm also bringing in wind power. And right now, you can see it's down because we got a little lull in the wind just now. And there it goes. Got a little gust, kicked it up to 200. Now, this has been up and running pretty evenly at uh, four to 500 watts on a steady basis. And that's about half the maximum speed of the, um, there we go, see it went up to 300 and almost 400 watts there. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's running um, at about half of the recommended high speed that it could run. Um, if it actually went up to the 90 mile an hour winds that uh, the turbine will withstand, I would be getting 1,685 watts out of that, but I'd have some problems <laughs> if I was out here with those 90, 95 mile an hour winds, there'd be a problem. So anyway, I just wanted to cover that. Now, I have a few um, inquiries recently on this item right here. This is actually called a dump load controller. They don't make these anymore like this. Instead of this little PWM that they have on here, you would switch to, they, they now switch to a digital um, diverter unit. So you still have the solenoid, but it'll be a digital di system that's up here, not the, the uh, PWM, pulse wave modula modulator. Uh, it's more efficient, but you still have to come in and go through a bridge rectifier. These three on the top are the wires that come in from my PMA. I was also asked, what's a PMA? Well, a PMA is permanent magnet alternator. Okay, now if there's only two wires coming in, um, one would be red and one would be black, and they, uh, they, that would be a P. MG or a permanent magnet generator. Okay, now, the reason you go with an alternator is there's a couple of reasons. Number one, you can use smaller gauge wire over a longer distance with an alternator using AC power than you can. Um, I thought that was loose, but it's not. Then you can you, you, with a generator. A generator requ requires heavier wire. So you save on copper when you're, you put a, a PMA instead of a PMG. Now the PMG actually has one of these bridge rectifiers built into it. That's the other reason. If there's a problem and the bridge rectifier blows up or burns out, it ruins your whole um, turbine. The turbine is, is waste. And the, the repair is all the way at the top of your pole at the top of the mast. So you have to take the whole system down to replace the bridge rectifier. By going with an alternator, a PMA, I can put the bridge rectifier here next to the batteries. And I can, if something goes wrong with it, I can replace it right here. I don't have to climb the pole or take the pole down or anything like that. All right. So I just wanted to cover that. Now these little units right here, this one is not um, a good one. 
As a matter of fact, it was a cheap one, and this was a replacement for one that didn't even work right, which uh, I think, yep, I got it right here on the shelf. And it says 200 amp on it, but again, you got to be wary of these Chinese-made things. This is exactly that one, but this one didn't work right at all. I mean, this one wouldn't even show me anything on it. It just sat there and froze. Now, this one's not working right either, and I know because it doesn't hold the amps peaks. It doesn't hold the watts peak. It doesn't hold any of that stuff. So when, this, when the wind's all shut down, I'll never know what my peak inputs were. So this is junk, but I just have to have something there to give me an idea. So I'm sure that I'm taking in a lot more uh, watts than what this thing is saying. Probably where it's saying I've got 100 and something watts here, I'm probably in the uh, two to 300 watts area. Now, you can, come into a bridge rectifier and then the two wires that come out instead of going here and directly to the batteries like you would when you're using a dump load system like this I could go through a midnight classic and these are um, designed so that you can use them for either solar or um, turbine wind power you can't use it for both at the same time. It's got to be one or the other. So I have room here where I can put another one. And when I do upgrade to a 48 volt system, I'm going to have to do that. Because I'm going to have to uh, upgrade everything here to 48 volt system. Now I'm not sure if this Midnight Classic will handle 48 volts or not. So I'm going to have to do some more research on that. I may have to change everything over, but um, what I'm going to be doing is instead of using this type of setup in here, I'm going to switch this over to the guest cabin uh, for some of you lucky people who end up becoming uh, premium patrons on my channel uh, and you win a chance to come out here and spend a week or so uh, learning from me directly on how to live off the grid and things that are required and what you have to do and things like that. And we'll also have some fun, maybe go out and do some prospecting and uh, exploring the deserts and things like that. Anyway, uh, back to this. I'm going to be using probably an all-in-one, and I'm still researching that. And I'll be switching over. I know, I know, I said I probably wouldn't, but I will be. Switching over to LifePo 4 batteries. That's lithium um, iron phosphate uh, batteries. L L L the Li is for lithium, Fe is iron, and uh, uh, Po is phosphate. So lithium iron phosphate batteries. And I, I'll be going with 48 volts, and this, this is a 12 volt system. And I think these are only good for 12 or 24. So I'll probably um, stay at 12 volts with it for the guest cabin because the inverter and I love this Ames inverter this inverter is a 12 volt inverter now the all-in-one that I'll be switching to will have the controllers the MPPT controllers the inverter everything will be built into one system all right so most likely um, I'm going to have to get a different midnight uh, to go beside it to run the wind. Unless I can find one of the all-in-ones that'll allow both a wind connection and a solar connection. I'm still researching that and down the line I'll let you know what I come up with. So anyway, I just wanted to cover some of that stuff because uh, I've been, like I said, I've been getting some inquiries on this stuff. Now they don't make these anymore. You might still be able to find one somewhere that's used that somebody is getting rid of. Um, I wouldn't recommend going that way because you don't know if the other person blew it up or not. Now this connects to this um, load here, which is a resistor. I think it's a 300 watt resistor, which just dissipates heat. And if the 
turbine starts putting out really super high voltage before it damages my batteries it will click on like this the fan comes on to keep the solenoid cool I did that myself because these solenoids will get hot and that's now sending electricity up here now uh, even with that on another extra 300 watts we went down here to 13.6 from the 13.8 that it was at a little while ago. So even still running a 1500 watt electric um, heater inside the cabin and everything else, and then throwing on an extra 300 watts of uh, dump load, the, um, the system was still handling it without a problem. So anybody who tells you that a 12 volt system is junk, tell them, hey, Go look at some of G Bear's videos. He'd been living out there almost nine years on some six volt uh, batteries hooked in series to make 12 volts. And he's got a 12 volt system um, that's almost nine years living off grid and at least a year and a half or two years um, before I moved out here, I was running tests at the house where I lived at in the city. So. These have been around for a while, and they're still doing their job. But uh, it's time to upgrade. And I am, I've been doing some research, and I, I'm really going to go to 48 volts. Not 24. I'm going to double that and go to 48. And uh, uh, the systems are getting better and better. And I'm not going to buy a bunch of 12-volt lithium batteries either. I'm going to buy 48-volt um, lithium batteries. So if one battery goes out, it's one battery. It's not four 12-volt batteries that, that are gone. And uh, I just replaced one battery instead of four batteries. Uh, well, I, the lithiums, I think even if one battery goes out, you can take it out of the system, but you still have to take the other three out of the system too because they won't be making 48 volts anymore. It takes four 12-volt batteries to make the 48 volts, 4 times 12, right? All right, everybody. I want to thank you for joining me. That's all there is. I just tucked a glove under my arm. That's what the jumping was. I had to buy some new gloves. My other ones were all um, worn through on the back side, and they weren't stopping the cold from getting to my hands. So I bought these uh, today when I went to the store, and... Uh, I shouldn't have, but uh, I spent the $14 because I needed to. Um, my hands freeze. Ain't going to do me any good, right? Anyway, thanks for joining me. This is G-Bear signing off.